Come on, Beans Thief. I don't like dummies, and I especially don't like dummies who are junkies. If you've got any use for that skin of yours, you'll start talking. Sergeant, I swear I'm clean. I swear you. Mm, you're clean. You just got out of a federal hospital a week ago, and you came out broke. What were you doing in Danny's Inferno? Getting yourself a fix? No! Look, take me to a doctor. He'll tell you I ain't had no stuff. Look. You and Danny got something going. You're pushing for him, aren't you? No, no, look, I ain't done nothing wrong. What do you want from me, anyway? I want you to admit you're pushing junk. But you're working for Danny. Lieutenant? Look, I know you got a right to pick me up any time you want, but I ain't done nothing wrong. Look, I kicked a habit in the hospital. I ain't never going back on. Why'd you pick him up? He's coming out of Dandy's. So what? So he's a cheap crook, and Danny's a first-class crook. I thought I could tie him together. Look, I just went there to meet a guy who never showed up, so I left. That's all, I swear. He hasn't had anything tonight, Frank. Do you have any evidence against him? If I had, Danny would be sitting right there next to him. Okay, Beansy. Thanks, Lieutenant. No hard feelings. And anybody can make a mistake. Frank, you're a cop. You can't choose your badge to solve personal problems. I've been behind my badge for 16 years. I think I know a little bit about my job. Frank, I'm not just your boss, I'm your friend. Don't toss away those 16 years. Use your head. Badge or no badge, I'm going after Danny. I'm going to get him. you out from behind that desk and without your badge. You heard that I picked up that hophead last night. You knew I would. Listen, Madden. You're steamed at your brother because he's working for me. You told him so, and he told you to like it or lump it. Now, you listen to me, Daddy. I didn't put that kid through five years of college to clean up your garbage. He's not a kid, and you're not going to scare him off by riding my back. No. I don't need to scare him off. All I want him to do is get a good square look at you. Find out where you come from and who your friends are. And he'll dump you himself. Hello, Willie. Don. Frank. I couldn't reach you at the club, so I called Stu. He told me where you were and why. Yeah, well, you keep hanging around with him and his kind, you'll be coming here often. Cut it out, Frank. I'm sorry about this, Willie. If you want to get yourself another lawyer, I'll understand. No, Don. Not unless you want out. What are you apologizing to him for? For you. Hey, Donny boy, just... you say goodbye to this guy. Give me the word and I'll kick him right through that door. You're wrong, Frank. You're wrong two ways. First, you can't lead my life for me. And second, you're wrong about Willie. Thanks, Tom, but I don't need the references. Yeah, sorry. Is there a place where Willie and I can talk alone? tell you that he means well yeah I was pretty hot when I came in here but I guess I understand he can't find a case against me and he's too good a cop to frame one he is Willie I'm glad you know that yeah well uh, what's so important this hour of the morning Don the scandal magazine people call me at nine sharp they're nervous they want to make a deal well, the only deal I'm interested in making, Don, is a headline retraction of all the lies they printed about me in their magazine. I told them that. They assured me they'd work things out to your satisfaction. 
They're going to be in my office in half an hour. Well, Counselor, after you. Um, look at it this way, Danny. Whatever we wrote about you in our magazine, now, I'd say it was exaggerated. It's a lie. Okay, even that. Did it actually hurt you? I mean, did it cost you your business or hurt your social life? Gary's right. Chances are it glamorized you and your restaurant more than ever. Oh, we don't think so. In fact, I have here affidavits and depositions which will prove that you knew the information was false before you printed it. Um, without admitting anything, my uh, partner and I would prefer to settle this privately. How much would Mr. Danny take to forget the alleged damages? Mr. Danny will take a cover story in your next issue with a flat statement that you lied. In fact, Mr. Danny demands approval of your retraction before you print it. Well, Danny, it'd be a reasonable thing like that to put us out of business. I hope so. We won't do it. Good. When do we go to court? I'll file tomorrow. I don't think there's anything further to discuss. Daddy, every dime we have is tied up to that magazine. Fine. The only thing you can do to a trash writer is point a finger at him. You should be familiar with that technique. You invented it. You uh, sure you won't change your mind? I uh, promised matter and I wouldn't lay a hand on you. I might change my mind about that. Let's go. Sharpies with college educations. Give me a poor, stupid crook any time. College educations are not. With these statements, we'll have them stone cold dead in court. How about some breakfast, Counselor? Good idea. A table for two at 9.30 instead of nine. Very well. Oh, good evening, Sergeant. It's stew, isn't it? If you prefer it. I was talking to some of your old pals in the Bunko squad the other day. They told me that you used to be able to stand on a street corner and lie about the weather and make everyone believe it. Well, I haven't saw weather in quite some time. Uh, would you like a table for one, or do you prefer to go to the bar? You know, you don't kid me, con man. You're not handing out those menus just for tips. I think Danny's got something going here, and you're part of it. Well, it's nice to be needed, yes. I'll make you a deal. We've nothing to trade, Sergeant. Sure. Forget it. Willie? How's it going, Beth? Oh, another day, another million. You drinking, Sarge? Sold over the rocks. Ever been in jail, Biff? Oh, I once took a bet from a plain clothes man. Cost me uh, $200 in 30 days, which is no news to you, Sergeant. Matter? You want to see me? I don't want to, but it's a living. He's trying to get me to admit we're killing people in the back room. This is a public place matter, but only for eating, drinking, and dancing, not for strong-arming the help. Keep that in mind and leave. That's what you say. I say I received a tip that you're running a sky-high crap game upstairs. A tip from whom? One of our friends. Does the police department have a record of this uh, friendly tip? No. I never reveal the source of my information. Especially those you invent. That's what you say. I'm gonna have a look around. Upstairs, downstairs, all over. You got a warrant? I can get one. No, you can't. You'd have this place all cleaned up before I get back. Have it your way. Look, Danny, I got nothing against you personally. There are dozens of chiselers in this town. Sooner or later, they'll fall without my help. Just get out of my brother's life, and I'll return the favor. What do you say? I say that it's none of your business. Mister, you're keeping it my business. Sooner or later, I'm gonna dig something up on you. 
But when I do, it'll make that scandal magazine sound like one of your fan clubs. I didn't confess. How about you two? For the first time in my life, I'm glad I'm on the level. It gives me the right to get sore at a cop. You're both true blue, but it's not going to stop the good sergeant from leaning on us day and night. Yes, but it's very boring. Every time I help a lady with her fur, I expect to hear Madden's voice behind me yelling, Stop thief! Yeah, and every time I want to read the racing sheet, I got to go in the kitchen so this guy won't think I'm booking bets. Danny's Inferno. Yeah, he's here. It's the other man, your lawyer. Hello, Don. Willie, I think we just hit the jackpot on our case. Something new? Very new and hot. Seems that my brother's war against you isn't all personal. It just cost us 50 bucks to find out that the magazine boys are trying to frame you before we get to court. Can you come to my office right away? I'll be there in about uh, 15 minutes. Right. I gotta go to Don's place. If I'm late, you two close up. Victim's private file. Uh huh. Okay, thanks. I suppose the case file is missing. We don't know what's missing because we don't know what was in there in the first place. We just got an anonymous call to go to Don's office. And all we found was you and him. Well, what about what Don told me? What you say he told you. He had proof that Cochran and Lloyd were trying to frame me to save their magazine. Well, maybe he had. But we don't. Cochran and Lloyd are at a resort motel in Monterey. They claim they were there all last night. Naturally. Well, their statement is as good as your suspicion. Anyway, they're on their way here now. I... Frank, I thought I asked you to go home. Uh, what you been telling him? His story checks out on time and movement. You can take a straight look at the facts. He had no motive. Then why'd my brother call him so late? Tell me that. He said someone was using you to frame me. Using me? How come I didn't know about it? That's what I was going to find out. Look, Sergeant, you can go on hating my guts, but you must know how much I liked your brother. It can't make sense to you that I'd kill him. Save your own hide? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Oh, Frank. Donnie was a smart kid, ambitious. Maybe too much so. And trying to save Danny's skin, he found out what he was really like, and then he couldn't stomach him. Maybe he found out too much. He thought he was going to tell somebody. Frank, if you've got some facts, evidence, any kind of... Problem, I'll get them. Don't worry. I'll get you all you need. No. No, I don't think so, Frank. This isn't your case, and it isn't going to be. What do you mean, isn't? He killed my brother. All right, if he did, we'll find it out. I want you to take some time off, Frank. A couple of weeks, maybe. No. I'm not asking, Frank. That's an order. I'm not taking orders on this one, Joe. Frank, don't be crazy. You're making a big mistake, Sergeant. No, no. No more Sergeant, just plain mister. We're dealing even now, Danny. Just you and me. Frank! No, no, Joe. You're, you're right. I can't wear a badge on this one. I don't want to. Where are you 
appreciate your hospitality, Beansy. What do you want with me, Mr. Danny? I ain't got nothing going, nothing you want. You've got a memory, Beansy. Remember me something. Who sent you over to my place to get picked up by the cops? What are you talking about? All I had was a phone call from a guy I didn't even know. He... You're lying. Who killed my lawyer? Kill him? Oh, no, gee, I, I don't know nothing about that, honest, I swear. Where were you last night, Beansy? No place. I, I mean, I, I went to a show. You better be able to prove that. How are you living here? For a guy fresh off dope, you're holding up pretty good. Or did you pick up the price of a little something last night? Where are you getting the money? I got friends who help me. Oh, come on, stop it. You got no right to walk in here. Empty your pockets. What do you mean? What do you want me to do it for you? No, no, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Look. Fifty bucks. That's what my lawyer friend gave you to confess the frame against me, wasn't it? Only it was just an excuse to get him in his office alone. You're after the signed statements in the file cabinet. Only he caught on to you and you killed him. Oh, no. I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. The rest, okay. Okay, I tried to frame you, and I sent the guy up with his lawyer, but I didn't kill him. But you know who did. You were there when Corcoran and Lloyd killed him, weren't you? Weren't you? <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going to let you spell it out to the cops. No, no, no. No, they'll nail me for accessory. With my record, I'll get life with no parole. That's better than your friends will get. Oh, no. They ain't no friends of mine. No, look, I never even wanted to get in this deep. I didn't know they were out to kill a kid. Come on. Come on, give me a break, huh? Lieutenant Hildebrand, please. in a chair. He can't stay that way forever. Look, he knows all about you and your partner. He's trying to tie me in on the killing, too. Look, he would... He was calling the police when I slugged him. No, no. No, no, not me. Listen, if I'd known you were going to finish off that lawyer, I never would have... No, I told you, no. Leave me out of this. If you want to croak him, you do it yourself. Yeah, I'm getting out of here, you understand? I don't know where. I'm just getting out of here, out of this town. Look, if you want Danny, he's right here waiting for you. I didn't want any of this. Why'd you come here and bother me, huh? They're probably gonna show up here pretty soon. Maybe, maybe you can make a deal for yourself, huh? Beansy took off a little while ago. He admitted seeing Lloyd and Cochran kill your brother. They're both on their way here now to do the same for me. Untie me, Madden. If 
my brother hadn't gotten mixed up with you, he'd still be alive right now. I know what you're thinking. Don't be crazy. I could take a walk around the block. When I got back, they'd be here. I could catch them red-handed, couldn't I? If you leave me here, it's your murder as much as theirs. I'd just be ten minutes late. Who'd know the difference? You would. The badge didn't make you a good cop. Taking it off doesn't make you a bad one. Maybe I think you've got it coming. Call headquarters and tell them to pick up Beansy. Thanks, Danny. For what? For not letting me walk out that door. I know you like fresh step. Joe, the lieutenant, he reminded me of something. He told me that if you'd said your piece of the papers about me, I, well, I couldn't blame you either. Things that have gone pretty rough for me. Forget it. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to forget it. But I wanted to tell you straight to your face that your helping me doesn't give you a special license in this town. If any of you get out of line, I'm still going to jump you. You see, I had it all wrong. I always figured that if you couldn't bribe a cop, do the next best thing. Do him a favor. <laughs> well, it's just as well. If I got too friendly with the police, it might destroy my sense of values. <laughs> Well, now that we understand each other, how about me buying us all a drink, huh? It's against the law to serve liquor after 2 o'clock. Oh, sure, but I, I thought that... No exceptions. However, there's a bar upstairs in my office. Mm -hmm. 